walked into a freaking shitstorm here! On our way. In a series of eye-popping trailers dating back to 2005, Killzone 2 has enraptured the masses with the promise of blurring the line between reality and the radical. Years have passed with a slow trickle of gameplay videos, closing in on those target renders offered up nearly a half a decade ago. It's just about time to finally enter the Killzone. Part 2 kicks off following the events of the original Killzone and the PSP's Killzone Liberation. You take the role of Sergeant Thomas Sevchenko, Sev to his compatriots, a member of the ISA, Interplanetary Strategic Alliance, taking the fight to Helgen, home of the Hellgast insurgency. It's easy to tell friend from foe. The bad guys have beady little red glowing eyes filled with malice. Combat is first and foremost the core of the game, with tactical elements filtering in. There are all-out battlefield encounters, stirring echoes of trench warfare, as well as more covert missions where you outflank the enemy or perform a spot of subterfuge. More often than not, you'll just be fighting for survival, either solo or with a small platoon against overwhelming odds. This is the Hellgast's planet, and they have tons of reinforcements. But don't count your squaddies out. They'll land some kills and can perish themselves, but if you're quick, you can revive them. Good to go! A lot of modern shooter conventions make the rounds. You can only hold one primary and one secondary weapon. Health regenerates, and there are plentiful checkpoints. What's new is a cover system mapped to the duck button. This allows Seb to attach to cover, and then with the analog stick, peek over to the side to squeeze off some shots. Going in guns blazing may make for a great 30-second action movie, but it will get you killed. A few well-placed shots are enough to drop you. A small inventory screen rounds out the controls, allowing you to switch between grenades and knives for close combat. The preview build has a small but substantial armory with a few submachine guns, rifles, and rocket launchers. The sniper rifle incorporates six axis control, allowing you to finesse your aim with small tilts, but go too far and your shot will be foiled. The six axis also shows up once in a while for turning valves and setting bombs, while an occasional barrier can require you to shoot out a control box. It's nothing too cerebral, but minute breaks from the constant onslaught of war are appreciated. The Hellgast features shock troops of all sorts, including deadly armored juggernauts that have to be shot in the back to be taken out. Their R&D didn't skimp on niceties, with tons of tanks and mounted guns ready to mow you down. Occasionally, the ISA slips you a tank as well to help level the playing field, but you have to always be on the lookout for a rocket launcher and some extra munitions. Also, keep a keen eye out for special targets to destroy, which will likely tie into trophies or unlockables. Apart from the campaign is an extensive multiplayer mode, allowing you to side up with the ISA or Hellgast and trade some lead. Level up, earn medals and ribbons while using ability badges with a class-based system, as you hone your scout, medic, soldier, engineer, saboteur, or soldier. Want to heal and kick ass? Then try mixing and matching the badges to create your ultimate killing machine. With clan support and dynamic multiplayer objectives that can change mid-round, Killzone 2's multiplayer has a lot to offer. Eight maps, 64 player bouts, and five main game types. Killzone 2 is finally set to try and live up to all those years of hype. What we've played so far has been a relentless pattern of duck and burst as we scan each dirty, dilapidated environment for burning red eyes. The multiplayer looks to have all the bells and whistles, minus a co-op feature, but we haven't spent any significant time with it. Find out if hours spent in the kill zone are a good use of your time in our full review in the coming weeks. Dang.